All right, lesson 51. New concept. Oh, boy. Yay. Fine. What's this? A line. Line. Second. A line that goes forever. A line. Number line. Number line. Can you be more specific? Number line. Number line. Yes? This is the this is a number line. What kinds of numbers do we find on there? Oh, real, real numbers. numbers. That's right. Just the real number line. We've got positive numbers, we have negative numbers, oh. we have integers, we have fractions, oh. we have decimals, oh. we have rational numbers, oh. we have irrational numbers. You know, like the square root of two is irrational. Oh. And then you have somewhere zero. around here, like, you know, square root of two. Uh, somewhere about here, we have pi. And then you have zero. The number two is right here. This is my hey. 2.5 is right here. This is my favorite right. number line. Right. There's, there's it's not hard any numbers. other kind. All the real numbers are on this line. Let's do it with imaginary What if there are numbers that were not on the real number line? Oh no! Uh, those numbers not, are silly. They, they don't would, go here. They would not be real numbers. <laughs> like the square root of They're the imaginary. The square root of zero. Yeah. 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 Square root of zero. What, all right, what's the square root of zero? Zero. 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 Why? Because you say it by zero by zero. Yes, say it, say it one more time. Zero times zero equals zero. Alright, so the square root of zero is zero because of zero now. Because zero times zero equals zero. Alright, what's the square root of four? Two. 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 Positive or negative. Two times two equals four. Uh, oops, that's not equal. Uh, because zero times zero equals zero. Now the square root of four is two because two times two, two, times two, two, two equals four. zero. Four. Two times two equals four. Two times four. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Four. Yeah. All right. Well, then how do you get I? Now, what what happens if I do negative two times negative two? Then it's four. I get four. Four. So I have a positive square scared? root, and uh, and I could also say that usually if we if we mean the negative square root, we usually put a, a negative in front of it like that. I thought I'd make sure I'm sorry. Thanks for sharing with the class. Did, did you almost <clears throat> All right. she didn't like what, what would happen? What if I wanted to take the square root of a negative, negative four? Oh. Is there any number that times itself equals negative four? No. no. It's because of the negative. negative. There isn't. Two and negative two? No, there is. It's an imaginary number. Well, two and negative two are not the same thing. We are looking, we are looking for some number that times itself equals negative four. Nothing. And we got two smart hours pulling up calculators. Magic. It doesn't work. Huh. Oh. What, what does the calculator say? My. Stop. Glob. What? What, does, does it just say error or does it say anything more specific? No, just error? You all want to try. My okay, uh, on one of the scientific calculators. Domain error. error. Non real answer. Non real answer. Ah, there's a clue. It's fake. But the fake. answer to that is it's not a real, real number. It's, oh, it's, it's in real mode. I can change it to not real mode. That's true, you can. How do you change it to not sounds, real mode? That sounds scary. Uh, you <laughs> probably can't. I don't think the scientific ones can do that. They're too oh, down. No. Should I do A plus B I or R E to the oh, A plus B I? And then be quiet for a couple minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The idea here is we want to have we want to have something that we can that we can square and get in a negative four. And so, what do mathematicians and scientists do when we run into a situation where we want to talk about something that doesn't actually exist, but we want to use it and talk about it as if it were a real thing? We make something up. So, what we're going to do? Let's take the most basic square root of a negative we can possible. That this is the most basic thing that is not going to make sense, right? The yeah. most basic thing that isn't going to make sense. Well, yeah. You can't have a negative square Well, I know, but... Does this make sense either? No. Oh, no. no. This is simpler than this. It makes less yeah. sense than... So let's just take a basic one, make a negative, take the square root. We're going to call this... I. We're going to call this... I. Ew. It looks like a C. Uh, and 
And when I, when I, in math class, when I write I for measuring numbers, I, I try to put a little bit of a curve and a tail on it so you know it's a lowercase i, and so it doesn't look like a 1 or something else. So what we, what we would say here, then, is i is the square root of negative 1. Meaning imaginary? Yes, i for imaginary. Believe it or not, we, act, we meaning mathematicians, actually like to, whenever possible, we try to pick things that have meaning. Like I for imaginary. Go figure. <clears throat> right. So the question is, uh, so what are we going to do with this? Um, let's say that we, uh, we, can, we can do a few things. If we, if we go with this basic idea here, there's some things that we can do. Uh, let's say that we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. What does that equal? 3. three. That's right. It equals 3. If I wanted to do a step in the middle, It'd be the square root of nine. And let me put a little more. Uh, I could say that that is the square root of three of, times three. Uh, it's the square root of three times three. Which is the square root of nine. Which is the square root of nine. Which is Oops. three. Which is three. Yeah. What if I did the square root of negative three times the square root of three? The square root of three i. Right, no, it'd be three i. Let, let, let's do this. Let's let's split this into square root of negative one and the square root of three. Okay. Oh, and I like that. So we split that, and then we and then we have this other square root of three. Well, what's the square root of three times the square root of three? Three. 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 Yeah. I. And square root of negative one is i. Is i, and this is the this is the big idea right here. So that's an i. Yeah. Except we actually write the i on the other on the uh, at the end. Yeah. Is that yeah. So the square root of negative yeah. three I times the square root of three equals three i. So then, when does it get it to when there's like multiple i's? There's like three i. I okay. And another question: <clears throat> When are we ever going to need to use this? Like life. Let's die a month no. no. so you bounce in your checkbook and. Something looks a little too weird, and you're thinking, where did these imaginary numbers come from? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and this is why YouTube has editing capabilities. <laughs> it's okay. Skylar's laugh. Got... All right. Uh, let's see. What is important here? Alright, so we uh, let's So this is this is the big this is the big idea here. What? Can you have negative i? Yes, you can. Oh. Alright, let's let's recap. Let, let, let's do something here. It's just the square root of one is negative i. Alright, let's let's do this then. Get your formula sheet out. And here's some stuff for you to write down. When we're talking about imaginary numbers. I is what? The square root of negative one. Yes, imaginary. So this, this is the main idea right here. I is the square root of negative one, which sounds like horrible grammar, but it's good out there. You tell I is the square root of negative one. <laughs> All right. So let, let's take this equation here. And let's let's square both sides. If I square i, I get i squared. I squared. If I square the square root of negative 1, what do I get? Negative 1. Negative 1. Oh, right. I see. Square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. That's snazzy. Is negative 1. Okay. Now, what if I take this equation and I multiply both sides by i? What's I, what's I cubed then? Negative 1 negative. square root of negative 1. That's right. Negative 1 times this is snazzy. I. Oh, what? I was not expecting that. Oh, because it's negative 1. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's negative 1. Negative one. one. Oh. And why is it negative 1? Oh. That's right. Oh, I get it. So this is negative 1 I. Wait, wait. Oh, I don't But I don't, I don't need to. Say negative one i. I like the one though.
why don't we say 1x, why don't we divide it by 1? And, and let's add 0. And let's put all this to the first power. I don't get it. <laughs> My why does i cubed equal negative i? I don't get that part. I get all the other crap. Well, first of all, I'd pretty appreciate it if you wouldn't call it crap. Beautiful knowledge. I get all the other beautiful bits of knowledge that I'm okay, never so, going to use. So this is the main idea right here. This captain and this And one. I squared both sides. So you go from here to here, right? Yeah. Okay. I just think... What if I multiply, let's multiply both sides of this equation by i? I squared times i is... I cubed. Okay. I guess that. And negative 1 times i... Negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Negative one. Times the square root of negative one. All right. What's the square root of negative one? I. I times negative one. Negative oh, one I times negative one. Thing makes. Ah! Uh, uh, I get it now. YouTube really needs guys. Do you get the idea that? Yeah. Long uh, drawn out noises uh, are not necessary and kind of annoying. Yeah. So don't yeah. do it. <laughs> oh, we're singing it. Can we okay. sing now? Okay. No, we're oh, the new song. Oh, oh grab my head. Oh, imagine me every day. <laughs> You're welcome. Why do you always fall out of your chair? I don't know. It's like, you need to duct tape me. Whoa! Quiet. Quiet. I have a headache. Okay, well, I don't make know. your head quiet. <laughs> I don't know him. Alright, let's take this equation. Let's multiply both sides by i. i cubed times i. Again? Sure. Negative one, right? Hold on, i cubed times i, I, the I the is i to the fourth. And then Let's I multiply this by i. A one. Negative i squared. One, because oh. it's negative one times negative one, okay. which makes it a positive yes. one. Yes. So, here, some, sometimes it's easier to skip this, but take this equation and square both sides. Right? i squared, squared is i to the fourth. And negative one squared is one. So i to the eighth would be one again. Uh huh. What's i to the twelfth? One. What's i to the sixteenth? One. I to the twentieth? One. I to the twenty-fourth? One. I to the four hundredth? One. Good job. Ooh. Every four i's that you multiply together is one. Right. So if you have if you have a square root of negative one, that's an i. No. Times the square root of negative one. One. That's that's negative one. Well, if you multiply that by square root of negative one and multiply that by square root of negative one, you've got you now have another negative one. And when you multiply those together, you have just one. So square root of negative one times square root of negative one times square root of negative one times square root of negative one is one. Another thing. So to me, so this pattern. Of i negative one negative i one, it, it's going to repeat. You know, every so is i you know, to the, the five, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, etc. i to the five is negative one. No, i to the five would be one times i. So i to the fifth power would just be so i again. I. And then to the sixth, what would that be? Okay, subtract four. Use so, every when you're talking about powers of i, every four. Every four i is one. just one. So, you just so i to the sixth power is going to be one. the same as i to the six minus two power, which would be negative so one. one. Which then is negative so one. So you just repeat that power. Uh -huh. So I would i to the seventh. So I to the So i to the seventh power is going to be the same just as i, I to the seven I. minus four. So be i cubed would be negative i. Then i to the eighth power is the same one. thing as i to the fourth one. power, which is just one. Yay! Happy. I to the ninth power is going to be the same as I to the fifth power, which is the same as I to the first power. So then it's just negative one. Does it just repeat over and over? Mm -hmm. Do we have to memorize these? Wait, so I to the ninth and the fifth is just... Is it I or would it just be I to the negative one? 
Everybody just be square root of negative one. So I to the ninth power is I to the fifth power times I to the fourth power, right? Yes. What's I to the fourth power? One. And one times anything is? One. Itself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if this equals one, then one times I to the fifth is I to the fifth. Yes. No. Well, I to the fifth is, is I to the fourth times I. Yes. And I to the fourth is? One. And one times anything is? Itself. Itself. Wait, will there be problems like that on my phone? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there will. Uh, well, yes, kind of, and worse. But not that. Worse? Oh. Oh. But not Wait, like that many eyes. Can you eyes. <laughs> refresh that, please? I'm very confused I'm confused by that. Alright, here. Uh, let's say we have uh, let's say we have I to the tenth. Yes. Oh, we have to know that. Yes. Okay, with me so far? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's I to the fourth power? One. one. And one times anything is one. one. Itself. One. one times anything is itself. One times anything is itself. One times anything is that other thing. So it's negative right? 1? 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times negative 17 is negative 17. 1 times anything is that other thing. So if I to the 10, if I can write I to the 10 as I to the 4th times I to the 6, and I to the 4th is 1, that's 1 times I to the 6. And 1 times which the is I, just one I to the 6. I, 1 times I to the 2. And this one, I can I can do this as i to the fourth times i squared. One times i to and the two, I, and it's negative one. And what i to the fourth is just one, so that's so. And one times i squared is just i squared. And i squared then is so g right is negative one. And so i to the tenth can simplify to just negative one. Do you recommend us memorizing the i to i to i to the fourth power? Oh, wait, I'm yes. You need, you need to memorize those. Oh, right on your well, write on your formula sheet, and as soon as you can, work in these problems. Is there like a little monster there. thing for this? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 mean, I, I kind of did it for you. As the main thing to know is that i is the square root of negative 1. Then you can just keep raising both sides to a power to get to other things. Okay. Alright. So that's the, that's the big, that's the, this is the main idea. These three things come from that. And there's one other thing, let's see, a couple other things you need to know. Um, um, actually, the other thing actually must be in a later lesson. Yeah. Uh, I'll, go ahead and I'll go ahead and tell you this now, actually, so you have it written down. Uh, uh, always factor out I first. Or factor, factor. factor out. <laughs> always factor out the square root of negative one as I first. Abby's gonna like this now. Right, change colors here just to make it easy. Easier to see. Want to factor out the square root of negative one as I first. What does that look like, you might ask? What does, does that look, look like? like? Thanks. Oh. Uh, look at this one. Right. So let's say we have, uh -huh. let's say we have the square root of negative four. Factor it. Factor this out first. Anytime you're taking the square root of a negative, put an I out there, or do, do this first. Take that negative out of the square root where it becomes an I. And so then the square root is not over the high. Two i. Correct. The square root is not over the high. And then and then simplify whatever you can here. The square root of four is two, so we have two i. So the square root, so it's two i squared that will give us negative four. To answer the earlier question. Another filter. Another comment. Uh -huh. Reals and uh, not real numbers. Is there a job that we ever need to learn or need or use in yes, numbers besides teaching? No. Engineering, maybe? Yeah. No. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, there's some engineering things, especially when it, comes, when it comes to uh, electricity, working with circuits. Mm. You need to know imaginary numbers. Uh, if I remember correctly, yes. Well, it's going to be an idea to that. Well, then probably not. Yeah. But it would be a good idea to know.
Take a look at this. Uh, let's see. Let's say I have a problem like this. Alright, if I tell you to simplify, what would you do? You can't. 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 You can not you can not these two are like terms because they both have an x. Mm -hmm. And these are not like terms with each other because this has an x and this doesn't. Right? Yeah. You already know that. Hopefully you've known it for a year or two. <clears throat> In the same way, real, imaginary, imaginary, real. You can combine the real numbers and you can combine the imaginary numbers okay. like that, but you can't combine real and imaginary. Yes. So you can do... So if, the, if this is the problem that says simplify, you combine the reals, and you combine the imaginaries, and you're like this, and this is, this is it. Uh, which reminds me of another thing. When you're writing complex numbers, for the standard form for complex numbers, is you always put the reals first, and the imaginaries last. Because imaginary numbers are fake. Imaginary numbers are bad. Have you know? Commas. Have you ever met them? Yeah. And they. Suck. And they're talking that annoying voice. Okay. What do um? All right. Commas on the calculator. Uh, different things depending on the context. All right. Page two twenty four. Let's walk through a couple more, a couple of examples here. Example fifty one dot four. What about Mueller's notation? Uh, it's pronounced Euler. And we, we're using one of those notation. That little I, that cur cursive the I, that means using that that I to mean the square of negative one. That that is Euler's na Euler's notation. That is very distracting. Is that the same thing as a sigma with like the sideways n? No. Okay. Let's say we have four minus three i plus six minus four i. Minus two minus five i. Do these parentheses make any difference? No. Do these parentheses make any difference? No. Do these parentheses make any difference? Yes. Yes, yes they do because minus we have a minus in front of it. So we have minus two, we have to distribute, and then plus five i. Let's see. So just like before, real, imaginary, real, imaginary, real, imaginary. We can have, we can combine all the reals. Four plus six is. 10 minus 2 is 8. Eight minus minus two. 3i minus 4i is minus 7i. Plus 5i is minus 2i, and there we go. Uh, 51.5. Okay. 51.5 to answer your question. 2i uh, is 2i squared. Which would be 2, or that would be minus 3 times iii, I, I, that would be i cubed. Plus 2i minus 4 minus the square root of negative 4. Can you say. Yeah. Ew. Not really. What? What? Is that is that you just move okay. the... What's i squared? Negative 1. So it's 2 times negative 1 minus 3. What's i cubed? Minus i. Negative yeah. i. Plus 2i minus 4 minus. Now, what did I say here? So this negative in the radical is going to be a 4, or a 9 here, square root of 4. Alright, 2 times negative 1, negative 2, minus 3 times negative i, plus 3i, plus 2i, minus 4, minus 2i. And now back to here. Uh, here's the reals, and the imaginaries. Yes. And notice I put the reals first and imaginaries last. There we go. Mm -hmm. It's it's a new concept, a new notation. Uh, it's it's not that difficult of a con difficult of a concept, but it is new. So it's gonna it's gonna feel difficult for a little bit here while you get in the hang of it. Uh, but it's really not that bad. Uh, 
Uh, last example. Please put the umbrella down. What's I cubed? Negative I. Negative I times the 3 plus 2. What's I squared? Negative 1. Negative 1. Plus 7, 9, nothing to do there. That's just 4. I to the 5th. Negative 1. Uh, oh, no, no. Remember, I, remember every 4 I's that we multiply is just 1. So I to the 5th is the same as I. Because I, I to the 1st. Because yeah. it goes negative, negative, positive, positive. But then wouldn't it be a radical irrational thing? Oh, which is I. Which is I. Okay. Alright, so this here, 3 times negative i, 2 times negative 1, 7 i, 4, 2 i. Remember reals, remember reals first, imaginary is last. Two. So we have negative 2 plus 4 is 2, negative 3 plus 7 is 4, plus 2 is 6 i, and there you go. Just like when you're. Okay, I'm going to set you up for a joke here. Right. The, the, we always put the reals first and the imaginaries last. Just like when you're just like when you're doing coordinates, uh, an ordered pair, you always put the x first and the y second. That's just the order that you do it in. <clears throat> Same thing here. You put the reals first and the imaginaries last. By the way, remember when I drew this uh, this number line? These yeah. are the real numbers, uh, and you can graph any real number. You can graph any real number on this line. Yes. Sir. What does it mean to graph an imaginary number? You do. You do. You just do it this way. So just like you can graph coordinates on, on an x y coordinate plane, now we won't, we won't be doing this, but you can graph you can graph you can graph complex numbers. By the way, when you put a, when you have real numbers and imaginary numbers and you put them together, that's called a complex number. You can graph complex numbers on the same type of two axis system. How now, is that telling you right. for a joke? Okay. Suppose you call something and you get a message, uh -huh. an error message, and the phone company says, I'm sorry, the number you have dialed is imaginary. Please rotate your phone by 90 degrees and try your call again. Uh, 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 